Now, Somalia is often referred to as a failed state, a country without an effective government or any rule of law. But it does have a distinctive judicial system based on Sharia law. Punishment is in the hands of the family of a murder victim, and they have three choices. They can forgive the killer, carry out the execution themselves, or settle for the payment of blood money. But with poverty ever present, the last option is often unattainable. Our reporter, Jamal Osman, who was born in Somalia, has been back to find out what it means to be on death row. It's the only thing that looks alive in this dusty cemetery. They call it the tree of death. The grave diggers are always busy here. The men who sit on Somalia's death row are brought to this little tree. They are tied to the tree and shot dead. He shows me the bullet holes in the tree. They are shot dead by the family of the victim. It sounds like revenge killing, an eye for an eye. But here in Somalia, this is justice. I wanted to find out more about what it means to be on death row in Somalia. A few miles from the cemetery, you come to Bosaso prison. It's home to nearly 400 prisoners. 67 of them are on death row. Bosaso is in Puntland with functioning authorities. It's much more stable than Mogadishu. I'm here to meet Mohamed Sambare, a convicted murderer. He's been on death row for nearly four years. <laughs> Mohammed used to be a fisherman, but he was not making enough money doing it. He got involved in human trafficking. He started taking groups of wannabe immigrants across the sea to Yemen. And that is when the murder happened. Out at sea, he shot his friend dead. He says the death was an accident. Our time was up for now. Muhammad was taken back to the cell he shares with about 40 other men. This is the courtroom where Muhammad was sentenced to death. It's the highest court in Bosaso. Every week, serious criminal cases such as piracy, sexual assault and murder charges are brought here. They are judged according to Somalia's Sharia law. And this is the judge who sentenced Muhammad to death, Sheikh Adam Ahmed. He is a strict disciplinarian. In court today, Ismail Sheikh is on trial for murdering his wife. Sorry. Sorry. 
أيا إسكال الكلمة الوحيد ككلمة ده وجود ما يسأل يسأل إسكال هدي ويرا ودلنا يا حكم كمك وكله عض وحلو تاجا يدور لسه وجامنا يو ماشي لو ده كلو بتوكت أيا لو تاجا this judicial concept is called Qisas, and Muhammad back on death row is caught in it. He spent the past four years waiting for his victim's family to make up their minds. Qisas in Sharia law means literally equal retaliation, and it states that the murder victim's family decide the fate of the murderer. They can carry out the execution or they can choose to pardon him or they can demand blood money. The negotiations can go on for years, but in Muhammad's case, the negotiations are breaking down. I am traveling to a village 100 miles south of Posaso to meet the man who will eventually determine to free or execute Muhammad. His name is Ali Faras and he is the father of Mahmoud, the man Muhammad shot dead on the boat. He's very much the patriarch of the family. A former military man, Ali Faras trained in Moscow in the 1960s and then retired to take up a more peaceful life as a camel herder. His son Mahmoud was just 21 when he was murdered. <laughs> He retrieved Mahmoud's body from the seashore. He told me his wife has never recovered from the loss of their son. The process of Qisas is coming to an end. Ali Faras must decide what to do. In Somali culture, camels have always been seen as a valuable, precious commodity. In Islamic law, blood money is very precise. One man's life is said to be worth the value of 100 camels. In order to buy 100 camels, Muhammad's family have to find $20,000. This is what Ali Faraz is asking for in compensation for his dead son. This is Muhammad's mother, Asha. She is the one who is left with the impossible task of finding all this money. Yeah. ولكن <تصفيق> 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 But today, Muhammad's mother is visiting him, carrying a bag of little gifts for her son. Asha is 60 years old and is struggling financially. Never mind the blood money, she can't even pay her rent. Out come all the presents. There are packets of dates, biscuits, soap, and of course, some clean clothes for her son. For today, at least, a mother and son have an emotional reunion.
Meanwhile, back in the court, everyone is waiting for the verdict. Ismail Sheikh Raga, Nikas Olubusu Edil, Islantisa, Lakin, Boliske, Hairelan to Aira, or Mutki, Rabbi Hagis, a Kahokme, a Gabadas Ulamate, Nikas Mahkamadu, as he they say, or here this will see this. So there is relief for Ismail. But back on Bosaso's death row, things are less optimistic. The grave diggers continue their work. They told me that the victims' families come here eager to finish the job. But once they shoot that the man, they always rush away. There is a sense of guilt. As for Muhammad, all he can do is wait 